Welcome back to Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jeremy Lapidus. Today is Tuesday, October 22nd. If you are just tuning in, we just went over the first half of the NFL Power Rankings, 32 to 17 on this beautiful Rankings Tuesday. We're going to finish up our rankings here, our power rankings here in this segment. But before we get into that, remember... If you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net. Or, if you are on YouTube, you can use that Super Chat feature. If you do either of those two things, a message should pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and everybody else around the world to see. If you do have a burning question about sports, anything at all that you would like to ask, go ahead and throw that in the comments. Throw it in the chat. I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. I appreciate everybody so much for sticking around, talking some sports with me here on a beautiful Tuesday, October 22nd. But like I was saying, in this segment, we are finishing up our NFL Power Rankings, continuing on from number 17, getting to 16 to 1, and that puts us at number 16 with the Pittsburgh Steelers. We had a lot of conversation about these Pittsburgh Steelers when we talked about them last week. The quarterback change, one that took me by surprise, But that's why I'm not the head coach of a football team for 18 years. That's why I'm not a successful football coach like Mike Tomlin. He made the right decision. Russell Wilson looked really good. I want to give him some credit, but it was against a Jets defense that was both injured and has been struggling for the last couple of weeks. So I still want to put a shadow of doubt on there, and I'm sure it hasn't been a perfect week for these guys. But still... The Steelers made a lot of big improvements, and the running game is going. That is a big thing. These teams at the top, all of them have at least a semblance of a running game, and that is what the Steelers have right now. They are here at 16. At number 15, the Los Angeles Rams. They are finally starting to get healthy. They get Cooper Cup back on Thursday. Puka Nakua was just activated out off of the IR. His 21-day practice window has opened. I don't expect him to be back for Thursday, but a big game, especially in a division as close as top at just four and three right now, or three and four. I forget. They're still in this race. They really are. So if they continue to play like they are, especially defensively, with the way that Kyron Williams is running the ball, having a nose for the end zone, I believe he's at like 15 straight games with a touchdown, which is ridiculous. Rams are going to continue to be a threat for the NFC. At 14, it's the Bucs. The Bucs coming off of a brutal loss, not just because of the way they looked, but because of injuries. They're going. They're in danger of going into a free fall here. Luckily for them, the NFC South continues to just be a jumble, jumbling of mediocre to bad. So they still have a shot in here at this one, but the Tampa Bay Buccaneers need a lot of things to go their right way, like we talked about in the first segment of the show. At 13... The Atlanta Falcons, the other running mate for the top of the NFC South, they play each other this week, Falcons and Bucks. That is a massive game. We saw the Falcons win the first one. If the Falcons win this one, I think the Bucks are basically all but out of the division race. Kirk Cousins and the Falcons need to play a lot better than they did against the Seahawks if they want that to happen. Neither of these teams are really, you know, juggernauts or anything, but they're solid to good, mediocre teams. They can beat anybody if they play good football. At number 12, the Seattle Seahawks. They just took down the Dirty Birds in Atlanta. They lose DK Metcalf for a little bit, but Geno Smith is back to playing good football. That's what we've been waiting on. When you get everyone involved, when you get a good game out of Kenny Walker, this is the kind of game that the Seahawks can play. The defense stepped up a lot on this one. You finally got some health back. Boy, Amafe made a really good play against Kirk Cousins, uh, leading to a fumble six, a scoop and score, if you will. This was a really complete game by the Seahawks, and they have the ability to play like that. They just don't do it every week. This was a game that they were placed on fraud watch by me, and they proved to me not completely frauds yet. They're still still on fraud watch, but they did a very good job of staying staying on the good side of it for now. At 11, we have the San Francisco 49ers. The 49ers played awful. Period. They played awful. They're still a good team. They lose a lot of their weapons, but they played really really bad against the Chiefs. A Chiefs defense that is playing one of the be- playing is one of the best units in the game right now. But still, a lot of issues with this team. Obviously, losing Brandon Ayuk sucks. Now your number one receiver with 
Debo Samuel being hurt for at least a little bit of time is going to be Ricky Pearsall, who went through that shooting earlier on in the offseason. He made his first appearance, played solid. Juwan Jennings is still hurt. They have a lot of issues on this team as far as injuries go. They are not out of it because of the way that their division is, but it's not looking like a typical San Francisco 49ers year. At number 10, it's the Philadelphia Eagles. Saquon Barkley, 176 yards and a touchdown in his homecoming against the New York Giants. A revenge game. He went full revenge mode. The Eagles played their best game of the season by a mile. That defense, like I said, played really good. Eight sacks. The offense didn't turn the ball over. Saquon Barkley led the way. That running game is so important in today's NFL, and we are seeing that. If you can combine it, go off of play action, it makes your team just that much better. The Eagles cracked their way back into the top 10 for the first time in a while. If they can play like they did against the Giants, they are back to being true contenders. At number nine is the Chicago Bears. They were on a bye. Don't have too much to say about them. Caleb Williams continues to get better every single week. We will see if that trend continues this week when, uh, excuse me, we'll see if that trend continues this week when they take on the, num- potentially they take on the number two overall pick in Washington with the Commanders. The Bills up here at number eight. Josh Allen looks like a completely different quarterback. That's not true. He's been playing great ball the whole time, but this Bills team has been looking like, it looks like a completely different team with the addition of Amari Cooper. You get that true number one receiver, that's what you've been waiting on if you are the Bills offense. You get another running back. Ray Davis has been playing awesome in the with, with uh, James Cook, continuing to be it, wishy-washy with his health. That defense played really good against the Titans, to be fair, but still, I really liked what I saw out of Josh Allen, Amari Cooper, and the Bills. They're back up into the top 10 at number 8. At number 7, it's those Washington Commanders. Hopefully, Jaden Daniels' injury isn't that bad, but Marcus Mariota can come in there and be serviceable. 40 points against the Panthers is like, 30 points against anybody else so still really really good but we're going to take that with a grain of salt we'll see what happens with the with the commanders as we head into a big matchup this week for the commanders against those bears at home potential one versus two overall pick in the draft would suck if he is not there at number six is the vikings they suffer their first loss of this NFL season, a close one. They end up losing on a game-winning field goal, a walk-off field goal by Jake Bates and the Lions. They played really good. That defense continues to play solid. Sam Darnold didn't play his best game, but he played good enough. That Lions defense is good. That Vikings defense is really, really good as well. This is a great Vikings team. They are not anywhere near fraud watch. They are still comfortably in the top six. And honestly, you can play around with this top six. I think the this, this top six teams this in this week's power rankings are pretty clearly the top six teams in the league. At number five, it's those Houston Texans. Another another game that, that a, they end up losing on a walk-off field goal. The Packers and the Texans both played really good games. You, they, the Texans weren't really able to get their wide receivers involved too much. Tank Dell didn't catch the ball. Stephon Diggs didn't have too much production, but they were still able to keep pace with the Packers. C.J. Stroud didn't have his best game, but you did have Joe Mixon go off yet again. And with Joe Mixon, this team is a completely different animal. You see that week in and week out. You see the difference with him on the ball and with him out of the game. This is just a really good Houston Texans team. I don't have too many notes on this one. They're here at number five. At number four, it's those Green Bay Packers, the team that wins by a field goal, by a hair against the Houston Texans. Jordan Love continues to play great football. He's getting Romeo Dobbs involved more and more, a guy that a lot of people thought would be on the outs. Jaden Reed and a lot of those young weapons also continue to get involved. Josh Jacobs caught his first ever touchdown last week. He went the longest time, the most amount of caught passes without a receiving touchdown. He still has that record, but it's no longer ongoing. Very tough to beat there. This is a great Packers team. It's a great NFC North. You see three of them in the top six, all four of them in the top 10. The Green Bay Packers are a number 14. At number three, it's those Detroit Lions. How about the Lions? They get a big, gritty win. David Montgomery gets hurt. He's able to come back. They survive another David David Montgomery fumble. 
and they win the game on a walk-off field goal. Jared Goff has thrown more touchdown passes over the last four weeks than incompletions. He has thrown himself very much into the MVP conversation and the MVP race. This is a Lions team whose defense has shown much much improvement. Brian Branch in that secondary to go along with a lot of those young players back there has been a game changer. It is awesome to see a guy like that back there. The Lions are the number three team this week. And number two, it's the Ravens. The Ravens look like world beaters with Derrick Henry just going for 150 yards every single week. No one can stop them. Lamar Jackson, even if you can slow him down, Lamar Jackson can throw for five touchdowns on your head and 400 yards. Lamar Jackson, much like Jared Goff, putting together another MVP quality campaign. Maybe he wins two in a row. He's my MVP front runner right now. And the Ravens, as long as the defense can play a little bit better, they can beat anybody. And that leaves number one, the Kansas City Chiefs. And you can say, oh, why are they there? Again, the Kansas City Chiefs keep winning. Their defense is awesome. It might be the best defense in football right now. Patrick Mahomes has not played good. I won't try and sugarcoat that. They don't have a lot of weapons, but Kareem Hunt coming in there, running the offense, has been awesome. This is a Chiefs team with lots of weaknesses, but no one has been able to exploit them. So until they lose, they are on number one. Let me know what you thought of these rankings. Love to hear your thoughts. We're going to run through the top 10 real quick. Eagles 10, Bears 9, Bills 8, Commanders 7, Vikings 6, Texans 5, Packers 4, Lions 3, Ravens 2, and of course the Kansas City Chiefs at 1. We're going to take a quick break here. I'd love to hear your thoughts. When we come back, we finish out our show with the college football top 25 and the group of 5 top 5. So make sure you stick around for that. We'll be right back here on Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. 